fundamental competitive advantage, being the best at what you're doing, and then have a vision that looks at 10, 20, 30 years of growing your business. Business of Architecture UK, episode 60. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I'm your host, Ryan Willard. And recently, I seem to be having some extremely good luck and good fortune as I'm having these chance encounters with incredible, amazing, fascinating, talented people who then accept my invitation to come on an episode of the podcast and share all their expertise with um, all of us BO UK listeners. And this interview is one such chance meeting. I was at a property investing seminar a few weeks ago and a gentleman sits down next to me and introduces himself as Michael Bristow. And we get talking and and Michael is the CEO and co-founder of Crowd Property, which is a leading specialist property peer-to-peer lending platform that's been going now for nearly six years. And... It's a very powerful tool and an alternative to institutional finance for development projects. It's very much enabling this new wave of independent and SME developers and architect developers that is beginning to emerge. And you'll be able to hear and you'll understand in the interview why that why that is and the kind of obstacles that are often uh, occurring in institutional finance. And Michael himself is an incredibly impressive um, character. You know, he's got 18 years experience as a strategy consultant advising and leading international companies and private equity funds on M&A and corporate strategy. He was named peer-to-peer or he was in the peer-to-peer finance news power 50 list in 2018. He sits on the peer-to-peer finance association board. Um, He's got an MBA from the London Business School. He's got a first-class master's in mechanical engineering from the University of Birmingham. He's also a chartered accountant. And if if that's not enough, he's also grown an eight-figure property portfolio, the most of which is in London. So Michael really knows property, he really knows his numbers, and this was an absolutely fascinating conversation into how crowd property uh, works and what it does and where it's going and the depth of expertise that they are now operating and how you know, this unlocks, I think, for architect developers uh, a huge new potential in us being able to take hold of sites and find the financing and basically demystifying the whole procedure of raising capital for developments. So sit back and enjoy Michael Bristow of Crowd Property. Special announcement here. We at the Business of Architecture UK love to help you win more great clients and projects. And we've got a really cool opportunity for you. Our affiliate colleagues over at the Architects Marketing Institute would like to offer you a very special 45-minute one-on-one breakthrough call with one of their senior marketing experts. Now, the Architects Marketing Institute, which was co-founded by my good friends, Eric Bobro, Richard Petrie, and also Enix Sears was one of the original founding members. So these guys really are some of the world's leading marketeers for architects. So you're going to be in very, very good hands. And on this call, the Architects Marketing Institute, or AMI, will help you map out a simple action plan. And this is going to be based on their experience of working with hundreds of architects around the world, where they've helped them increase their income and the quality of their projects. And it's going to be tailored to you, depending on your budget and your goals, and of course, your ability to be able to implement. So the Architects Marketing Institute, just like us at the Business of Architecture UK, absolutely adore and love helping architects and want to help you attract more and win better opportunities for your practice. So that is the one-on-one session with AMI, Architects Marketing Institute. It's a free session, but in order to be able to qualify to have one of these sessions, there are a few required criteria. And the first one of those is that you are the owner, partner, or main decision maker for an architecture practice or design-related business. You must be able to have the ability to provide exceptional service and results for your clients. And finally, you must be targeting at least a further £100,000 in additional revenue for your practice. 
So if that sounds like you and you want to speak to one of the Architects Marketing Institute senior advisors, advisors, jump on one of those breakthrough session phone calls, click on the link that's provided in the information and AMI will be very happy to speak with you. And then after your successes, you can come and tell me all about it on the Business of Architecture UK. So book now. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I'm your host, Ryan Willard. And today I'm in Wimpole Street with Michael Bristow, who is the CEO and co-founder of Crowd Property. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Ryan. It's great to be here. Brilliant. Thanks for the invite. My pleasure. Absolutely great to be speaking with you and a real interesting business that you operate and I think this is going to be of a lot of uh, kind of very valuable information for a lot of architects who particularly are interested in doing their own developments or being able to support and serve their developer clients because your business is all about property and finance. So quickly how would you describe crowd property and what it is that you do? So so in, in the sort of technical language which I'll move quickly away from uh, we uh, more efficiently match the supply and demand of capital into property projects. Now, what does that mean in English? So we make it a downside easier for people doing property projects, predominantly SME developers, so small and medium-sized developers, okay, to raise finance quicker and easier and better um, and really have a partnership with, with their funding provider. So we we sit where we sit in our business is we are basically disrupting banks. Mm. So we are the senior debt, the first charge holder, um, and therefore we are we will put the majority of money into any property development. And just briefly, I mean, why we uh, why we're different is we're property people doing property funding. Number one. And we are, as a whole business, especially the founding team, property investors and then de developers ourselves. So we really understand, okay, and why we set up the business is because it's a pain. Uh, funding is a pain. So yes, no, and many architects may have experienced the pain of funding. You know, when we're working for developer clients and a project suddenly stops, and it seems like this kind of mysterious process that the architects are often not involved in. But we know that developers are struggling often pre-planning there's a lot of it's difficult for developers to get um, capital to make the projects happen mm. and it's often you know this has an impact on the entire construction industry and all of the sort of you know ancillary services and consultants that are there to facilitate buildings yeah, definitely definitely and if you look you know if we step right back and we'll start from sort of big picture stuff okay? yeah and I'm not going to say anything that that is controversial here. We need to build 300,000 homes as a country. We are building 165,000 at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so that's first and foremost. Secondly, um, there are fewer and fewer large tracts, plots of land, uh, large parcels of land, because they're getting built out by large-scale developers. Therefore, in order to build 300,000 SME developers building out smaller parcels of land are more and more important and mm. will become more and more important over time. And they have two fundamental challenges. Number one, planning. Number two, funding. So we're not solving the planning problem. You guys can do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we are solving the funding problem and coming at it exactly that perspective. Okay, let's enable good small projects to happen. So what are the typical obstacles with funding that you've been able to sort of circumnavigate and how do you make funding easier? Yeah, so it's, it's a great question. So, so we do a load of research into this and, and we do focus groups. So we sit down with developers and also we do sort of hard online quantitative surveys to say, are we still addressing the concerns that we, that we faced a few years ago? We said that uh, traditional lending is hard to access, is slow to access, and you might get a no after six months of trying. Now, as property people, we know that speed and certainty is very important to closing out a site. And if you're able to deliver that, you know, it's likely that you're beating the next guy. And it's likely that you can get a better deal if you're able to deliver speed and certainty, which is better for you, and it's better for your backers. Yeah. So that's first thing, speed and certainty. Um, 
And and so in some of our focus groups, we we get I, I've, I've got this one slide of quotes that I I present and. And, and, and they're the publishable ones. So if you, if you, <laughs> if you sit some developers around a room, uh, around a table, and ask them to recount their experience of traditional lending, you get a lot of unpublishable material. Um, and I don't need to go into any specifics on that. But there's a load of stuff that is incredible frustration and pain in the market that are huge obstacles, both on timing, on, on continual uh, requests for more and more information, on requests for irrelevant information, mm. on assumptions that are wrong, on an inability to access decision makers, an inability to uh, to assess the true risk associated, uh, the the inability to act with with speed in assessing that project, uh, you know, countless stuff. And, and 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 there are a couple of sort of great examples of quotes that that just to bring out two of those, uh, two of them that illustrate something a bit more detailed that. Uh, one was one developer said, "Well, at the last minute, they cut my LTV from sixty percent to fifty percent. Um, you know, the last minute—that's after four, five, six months of discussion. You know, that means you have to find a load more equity. Okay, that's yeah. a pain. And another one where they said, well, uh, uh, the, the, the response to a clever deal, a clever deal structure, was to lend me less and charge me more. Right, that is a rational banking reaction. Okay, because they don't understand it." If you don't understand it, then change the risk reward profile. Okay. Um, whereas we say, "Wow, that's a really great deal. We want to work with you. Uh, respect." Um, so it's sort of uh, it, you know that's the attitude we take, and that you know that is the property person's uh, attitude. Yeah. So, so and and uh, and so that those sort of you know sort of detail bits of pains with traditional lending. But then if you but then if you just don't think about pains, but also you think about wouldn't it be nice if, you know, for example, if your funding partner really cared about the vision of what you're trying to create mm. and how you're creating that uniquely and how, um, you know, how that is tailored towards your end market, et cetera. And all of those factors, because we're passionate about property as well. We want to really understand the drivers behind your, uh, your property projects. Mm. So um, they're just some of the things that, 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 that we address. Um, and unsurprisingly, it's pretty refreshing and popular. So, uh, so what does the platform do? How does it how does it operate, and how did you come about developing it? Sure. So, um, I, I'll, I'll start this from from the sort of the background as well, uh, from from a high level perspective as well. And think, if you think about uh, where money comes for a property project, okay, um, might be from a bank, um, but it certainly isn't from the individuals involved. Uh, you know, so, so when it's from a bank, it's from someone who has some money in savings account. And they might be getting 0.5% mm. return in their savings account. Importantly, that you know, what we do is not a savings product, isn't it? It's an investment great product. But, uh, but there's, uh, and then another example is, you know, my mother's a lender on the platform. I come, uh, I come onto the lender and borrower side of our platform. My mother's a lender, a lender on our platform. That, that, um, uh, so uh, sh she might, you know, if she was looking to spread her investment portfolio, she might say, right, okay, uh, I'd better go and ask someone about this, and she might speak to an IFA. An IFA might then say, well, put some funds into this fund. Okay, great. Right. That fund might then say, right, in our total asset base, we need some exposure to property. So they might put some, some of that money into a property fund. Yeah. That property fund will then find some property finance brokers that then find them some projects. Now, that's a lot of people. Okay. Yeah, it's becoming quite long-winded as a process. Well, it, exactly. And, and all of those people have costs. And they're not doing it for charity, so they also have profit <laughs> requirements. So it basically means my mother gets a terrible rate of return. Um, and 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 we, you know, that's the whole peer-to-peer -peer lending alternative finance market that says actually let's do that much more efficiently and match it much more directly. So that is the lender side of our platform. So investors can come on and say, right, okay, I like that project, and I'm going to lend against that. So it's, it's specific projects that they actually lend, they choose to lend against as opposed to putting it into a pot which you guys manage and then 
yeah. allocate to various projects. Exactly. So, so, and that's how we started and operated for four or five years, where people come and select those individual projects. Right now, everyone in Britain, these are these are at least part residential end product projects. Okay, and everyone loves a bit of property chat. Everyone has a view. Yeah, everyone has a view on what type it is, what where it's located on a macro micro level. Um, architectural factors, conditional factors, you know, all of these sort of things. Everyone has a view. It's a, it's a dinner party conversation, residential yeah. property. Okay. So, um, so that's what makes it interesting for people to select. And, 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 and you know, we've seen different skews of, of better photos, more architectural integrity, uh, volume into the market, and all of these sort of different, different sort of factors that people get drawn to. Um, but first and foremost, they have a view. Okay, so uh, people could come on and select an individual project to lend against. Okay, we also now just by the by have an auto invest uh, functionality where people can equally say, right, okay, fine, you guys assess deals well. You've got a hundred percent track record, which we do have of it repaying capital and interest. Um, I'm going to put some money in a pot, and can you just spread that across the next project, ten right. projects? Because quite frankly, I don't want to. I don't want to log in at 10 a.m. when you're doing project launches. I, I'm I'm happy with your systems and processes and, and and what you do. Just spread it for me, so I spread some risk. So it's like an automated exactly process. Literally gets dropped in on every project right. uh, for the next X, and X is specified by that user. Yeah. So what are they lending against next? Okay. So so. Uh, lenders, investors on our platform are getting between 7 and 8% return. And that return is first charge secured, as I mentioned, with senior debt. So, so we're the first payback if anything goes wrong. Okay, And that's really, really important in this mm. market. Uh, okay, so, so we protect our retail investors, the likes of my mother and my mother-in-law, which I'm scared who I'm both scared of. <laughs> um, uh, we, pr we protect them with the very, very best security. Yeah. Um, so they are lending against a property project where a developer has come to us, or a property professional, we, we like to say, um, has come to us um, saying, I have a project. I'm looking to do X, Y, or Z. Okay, and they articulate that to us and they say, right, in order for me to do that, I need this kind of senior debt funding. So, great. So, we will understand lots about the project. We will understand lots about those, the individuals involved and the team that's involved. Um, and then we will look a lot at the numbers um, and we will decide um, whether we like that project, whether it fits our pretty tough criteria and whether we then want to list it on our website for the aforementioned lenders to come in and participate. Right. And so what are the sort of criteria that you assess a project by? What kind of things does it need to be meeting in order for it to be viable to be put on the platform? Yeah. So so this is this is really important. So it's actually a it's a it's a holistic judgment on that project. Right. Okay. So and, and let me tell you what that really means is firstly we don't just have tick boxes okay that's that's what traditional lenders do when they don't understand property they form questions and tick boxes and and, and that never gives you the richness of understanding of that of, mm. of that project and that developer uh, that's first and foremost secondly um we look at as i said the project itself the economics of it okay and what it means that whatever that, uh, you know, there's sort of a, obviously there's a purchase price of an asset, whether it's land or a property, and then there's a cost to do whatever wants to be done. And then there's a potential GDV at the end of it, yep. gross development value. Um, and we will assess all of those pretty thoroughly. And, and the way we do that is with a load of data and analytics that we've built on our tech platform, which is, which is awesome. It's really high quality. And, and, one of the things we also look at is is sort of liquidity in that market. You know, if property transactions slow down more, then you know, can we still get out of this this project? Can the developers still exit uh, exit it successfully? We 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 will fund projects that both are sold but also refinanced and held by that developer, and then then rented out and yielded. Uh, etc so right. any kind of exit any kind of entry any kind of project that is a project um, 
And um, so we look at the project, then we look at the individual. The individual doesn't need to have tick the boxes of five projects exactly the same size within half a mile radius within the last year. Right. Okay. They need to be, you know, they need to show us a passion for property. They need to have a good team around them. Um, okay. So, so that's project and person. Okay. Then we will run uh, some, you know, we'll look at a load of stats around that as well in, t in, in terms of profit on cost. Um, and then we will ultimately, profit on cost, loan to cost, uh, et cetera. And we will ultimately make an offer uh, to, um, to, to someone that applies to us that basically says, right, we're prepared to offer you this for this long and under these terms. And um, generally what we offer will be um, the, 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 probably the highest loan to value in the market. And I, own, I, I say that with great caution, not to say we are flippant about what we lend out, yeah. but it's because we work damn hard to really understand it. And when we really understand it, we know what we can lend. And we will lend up to... 70% of the initial purchase, whether it's land or, or property, and up to 100% of all development costs. Right, okay. So actually, that's quite stretched wow. senior debt. Um, and we can only do that by having the very best data, the very best analytics, and brilliant people in the business. So that, so that, that really it. makes it very accessible yeah. for for a lot of perhaps first-time developers or property professionals, say like for example architects who are wanting to move and do their own developments, and that's a very common trend at the moment where there is a lot of architectural practices and businesses who've got an incredible array of experience of working for developers developing architectural projects and are now also wanting to do their own projects. They're often Architects often come across sites very quickly, yep. able to create viability studies and feasibility plans to understand the kind of, you know, what's the what's the sort of development value of these types of projects, the yeah. areas, the sort of planning cautions. So this actually enables a lot of independent developers to take on projects themselves and yeah. get going. Hugely. And if you think about the architect's role is quite all-encompassing in any project, whether it's for a client or not. Uh, but say, for example, you know, if an individual architect has not done a project themselves as principal, I mean, they have been involved throughout it. You know, could well be through project management the overall piece. Mm. But guess what? Over the years of experience they've been practicing, they know who are the best builders to use in that area and therefore to strike the contract with to deliver on that. Yeah. And we would look less at the fact that that person may have zero development experience and more at the fact that they are advantaged and have brought together a really good team to deliver on that. And suddenly they are now the principal of that uh, development. Now that makes it interesting. Yeah. So, th so this is a, it's how much kind of personal one-on-one -on -one time do you actually get with the, you know, both the uh, prospective developer and the lenders? Yeah. So, so it's a, it's, it's a really good question. So, we get so so first and foremost, uh, the the lenders and the borrower are not formally introduced with contact information, etc. The developers are building a brand on our platform to lenders and repeat borrowers are you know they're very very popular. Yeah, because they're proven things on our on our platform. Um, the throughout the process, so so we predominantly are a non brokered business. And what I mean by that is that we build direct relationships with property developers. Um, and that gives us the richness of relationship. Okay, so we're talking to you guys, the, the, the borrowers, constantly, constantly. Okay, and that's building up a relationship, number one. Number two, it's, you know, you know where there are challenges either early stage application or whatever, we'll, we'll steer some solutions, we'll structure a debt product for it. And then through the process itself, if there, if there are challenges, it's like, well, you know, our, for example, our property director is 35 years, um, uh, Rick's qualified, built millions of square foot him, himself in commercial and resi, you know, he, and he's not shy of sharing an opinion of actually, you know, look at it like that or maybe do that or think about it like this, cost structure it like this, add a bit of cost and contingency yeah. there, et cetera, et cetera. 
And therefore, we're all, the, the, the developer and us as lenders, are better for it. Yeah, so there's an ex- another level of expertise that's kind of being contributed as well. Exactly, and that's a partnership. That's a proper partnership. Yeah. Um, and even when, you know, things aren't going that well, you know, uh, there are some projects that have gone a bit late, some projects that have faced challenges, you know, because property development is challenging, yeah. It's a partnership, right? Let's all crack this together. Um, you know, things like uh, we've had comments where, you know, a lender will be very slow in uh, fulfilling drawdown requests during the project. And we find that remarkable because the single most important person or set of people on a development site are your contractors and the, the language they speak best is cash. Yeah, uh, I'm not talking about cash as in back of the hand or anything. I'm talking about them be you know get being cash flow positive for their project. Yeah. Okay. And you know the value uh, of 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 getting the money to them quickly. That's really important, and that keeps everyone happy. And and we all want everyone happy, and all of us want to work in partnership to deliver on mm. on, on on that. And so, so, so what's a typical scale of project for you then in terms of like its development value? Yeah, so we will lend anywhere from £100,000 uh, up to £5 million plus facilities. Um, we have the full spectrum within that. We can actually go larger now because we've got a load of institutional capital that's got very interested in what we're doing and, and they've started backing us as well. And... Um, so that really does fill that SME mm. property professional sort of space. So you know whether it's a whether it's a a, 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 a terraced student house in Liverpool finishing off the works, okay, which is probably our smallest loan to date, through to a building of seventeen uh, apartments and houses out the back of a former Lloyd's Bank building in Tunbridge Wells, you know, all of that spectrum we cover, and um, and what we see is really interesting is is that we're able to adapt and understand to things very quickly so we're funding modular builds we're funding serviced accommodation we're funding co-living we're funding uh uh interesting housing benefit structures that are contracted out like uh like temporary accommodation on 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 contracts to major third parties and valuing the covenants of that and um one of the, I mean, we're we're here in London today, and uh, one of our projects is a right next to Waterloo Station, which is a sort of a terrace building where it was a really complex freehold leasehold structure. Yeah, we cracked that problem and worked out how to deliver what the uh, what the vision was, and the vision was to exploit the air rights above that terrace unit and put two modular flats on there. Now that takes some expertise and some, you know. Being right up to speed with the with 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 how property is developing on on every level, uh, to be able to act quickly and fund that kind of uh, that kind of project. And and in with traditional vehicles for funding, would you get this kind of input? No, at all. No, I mean, when we uh, again when we do the the research, what people are craving, especially experienced developers, what they crave because they've never got it in the past. Uh, is speed, transparency, mm. access to decision makers, knowledge and expertise from their lenders. Okay, and the reason why those things are coming out, especially amongst experienced uh, developers, is because it is not being delivered by traditional finance channels, um, and that's what we bring. You know, it is a direct property expert to property expert relationship to say, "Yep, that vision is great." let's let's collectively work out how to deliver on it so the the um the developers you were saying they don't it's often they don't have any kind of relationship with the lenders one on one that's right and so is there a, is there a potential for a project that could be it could be funded by say one lender or would it be funded by many many it's funded by many many okay. uh so typically at the moment there is about anywhere between 250 and 400 lenders on a particular project so that might be an average of one to three thousand pounds per per individual in that um in that project 
And you know, the developer doesn't need to worry about the relationship with all of those people. We manage that relationship, firstly. Secondly, we bring all that money. So we're not asking the developer to bring some friends and family to participate on the yep. project. What we have is over five years of operating and a perfect track record. We have a wall of capital. Okay, and you know, and and that capital is hungry for more great projects. Um, so you know, this year everything has funded in under two minutes. Wow! Um, so uh, you know, which is pretty cool to see when a six hundred grand project gets listed on a website and it goes in fifty seven so, so, seconds. So walk me through that process in yeah. detail. Like what happens with the launch of a project? Yeah, it's really so, cool. It's really cool. So 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 what we do is once we have agreed. Uh, uh, a particular the funding of a particular project okay what will typically happen is exchange uh exchange on the the purchase if there's an initial purchase okay uh and and we've done 90 percent of the legals uh then uh anyway so at that point we we're getting everything ready to launch on the website we then internally have a launch process that 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 starts to drip feed information out to our to our lenders um and that will be some photos and locational information, uh, okay, just initially, okay. It will go on our short-term pipeline on our, uh, on our website, so people are aware that something's coming up. Um, and then we publish the full information 24 hours in advance of go live. Right. And that's really important because if stuff's going in seconds, then, you know, you can't launch it then, and it's a bun fight, and people aren't reviewing the detail. We get incredible review time on that information okay and we we build that information and and we ask certain questions of of the developer to say okay just outline your you know your background your your team etc and we'll talk about a lot more about the location of the project and the project itself etc so we then release that information on our website and 24 hours later we will open it to pledging and uh or, or for investing and 30x seconds later and it's all funded um so that's pretty cool because it's really cool watching the process because yeah because because in our office uh, as well and we well we really welcome uh developers to come and uh, visit us because uh it's really cool watching a project launch in the office because it's it's more than just watching the totalizer on a website we have all our google analytics and then internal analytics on the big screens and all the team are gathering around. So we're a team of 30 uh, now, so it's, it's, it's quite a good buzz. Yeah. Uh, um, there's a sort of, we've got a long-standing sort of tally of who's guessed the right time on how long it would take to fund. So we've got two years of those those tallies on, on the board, and, it, and that's important to, uh, it's, 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 it's irrationally important to each member of the staff to try and get an extra point. Um, <laughs> and, um, and, and so we watch that, and, 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 and we can see all of that play out the the, the 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 traffic and the lead up in the in the hour lead up to the to, to the launch people are on on the site and then we can see them transferring from the project page into the pledge page and then they're making their investment and then when the totalizer goes up and it all happens quite quickly um, so but that the, the only reason it happens quickly is our first project almost five years ago that we launched took 10 weeks to fund that's no good to anyone Okay. We spent five years building a trusted brand and delivering, delivering perfect track record. Okay, and um, and that's really important. That maintain the track record. So many people want a part of it. Okay, so there's retail lenders like my mother and my mother-in-law, and then there's institutional capital that have got in touch as a result of our yeah. track record and 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 all of this experience, um, and. That gives the speed and certainty to developers on the uh, on the platform to raise funds rapidly, and we have we funded um, from end to end, from application direct into our website to completing on the the purchase of a project uh, in five or six days. Um, so that enables us to do auction finance. Um, so you know, if people are looking in auctions. You know, in some places there are good, really good stuff to be uh, to be acquired and good opportunities. And you know, we back that as well, and that's a demonstration of speed. If yeah. You can rely, you know, and auctions. Okay, again, it's really important. Okay, it, you know, the gamble goes down. You've got twenty eight days to to, uh, to complete. Okay, and you've put ten percent down, and that's at risk. Okay, so what you don't want to do as a lender is make sure you deliver in 27 days. No, you make sure you deliver in 
four to eight days and, yep. it, and it has buffer. You, know, you just make sure. Uh, and we can do that. So. And, and, and before a project is listed, do you give like a proof of finance to the developer clients? Is that something that they're able to, if, they, if they're in the kind of conversation with you before they've actually got the final funding? Yeah, so, so, so if, we, if we step back a touch and say, right, well, firstly, how do people get in touch with us? Okay, yep. And then, then I'll talk through that because that's okay. a really, really good point. Um, so, so firstly, um, as I say, we... we, we we accept direct applications on, on our website. What we've got is a 12-box form. Now, I've filled in forms for a buy-to-let mortgage that, of a property I already own that are 20 pages long. You know, that's just, just ir- irrelevant information. It's 12 boxes. Only four of them are numbers. Okay. And what that gives us, so that'll take you. If you've got a project, it'll take you three to five minutes to fill that in. Okay. And then we'll just start talking about it. You know, yeah, we're not. You know, what it, it does two things. It basically, it firstly serves up a load of data to our to our guys internally, and then those guys will pick up the phone and speak to you, speak to you about your vision, speak to you about the property stuff. You know, and then you are directly in touch with decision makers, okay, and experts within our business. Um, so that's really important, and and then we'll go through that process and we'll talk you through it, and and and, and in that process we'll give you. Uh, we'll give you illustrative offer within probably two hours right. okay, to say, look, this is the kind of lending, these are the terms. Okay? And you, you know, it'll be, it, it's, it's, it's not a formal offer at that stage. There's still a few things to then dig into the relevant questions like we'll want to see the cost model and things like that, uh, et cetera. But it's, like, it's helpful to know within a couple of hours, okay, this is, this is what we're talking about. Yeah, okay? Yeah. Okay, that's really helpful. And we'll give you one of three answers. Number one, yes, we like it. Here are illustrative terms. Okay, we just need to see a bit more. Uh, and you know, we need to see this, this, and this. And let's continue the conversation. The second answer is no, that's not the type of finance we provide. However, we know others in the marketplace that can provide that finance that will... Uh, we'll give you the names of. We don't get anything from that. Okay? Yeah, we don't have referral fees on that on that basis. There's just you know we're just helping out. Yeah, uh, you know it's a bizarre concept. <laughs> um, and then the third answer is another no. Okay, but it's a it's a it's a no with explanation. So we're not sure about this because of X, Y, and Z, right? And that might be you know. We're light on costs. We've got this challenge. There's this uh, title issue, or there's you know a range of issues that sort of say, right, you know, do you want to spend more time on this or not? Again, it's a helpful answer. So we've got three different answers. One's a yes, and two are no's, but all are helpful. So let's follow the yes path. Okay, so we've seen a seen a project. We've got back to you in a couple of hours with, hey, look, these are rough terms. Then what we really like is if people are getting in touch with us quite early on in the process, mm. because then we can add some value. We can we can talk you through it, and, and we can say oh, we can start brainstorming a bit together and, and whatever. And 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 a, and a couple of years ago, um, there's a guy who's an editor of a, a property investor magazine, and he came to us and said, "Do you like this project?" Uh, we'd funded him before, and and he said, and he said, um, and we said, "Yeah, we really like it." Okay. And then he said, well, I'm going into the negotiation with the vendor on Friday, and this is Wednesday. So within three hours of his application coming in, we'd given him a letter saying, we're backing this project. Right. Okay. He went in, won that site, and did not offer the most. Okay. Because that vendor wanted speed and certainty. And he gave speed and certainty above anyone else who was bidding for that site. Now, that's awesome. You know, and... You know, as property people, we understand that that's important. So we do that. Um, so that was a very long sort of explanation yeah. of getting to the point of saying, yes, we will help you get the best deal you can because guess what? It's also in our interest as well. Yeah. Uh, so everyone, you know, you know, and it's in our interest, not because we're taking equity share, we're senior debt only, but it's improving our security by you not spending as much on it. So you don't you you don't invest in any of the properties yourself. You don't have any kind of final equity in any of the investments that all the developments. No. So all of the uh, all of the developers, all of the upside is theirs. We're just replacing the banks. Uh, we're we're lending more than the banks. Okay, and 
you guys have all the incentive to get out there and max out the uh, uh, the, 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 the profit from that. So, so what does this mean for traditional finance? How are they viewing what you're doing? Well, it's 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 actually so so. Uh, this is kind of like, it's called alternative finance, but I don't think alternative is really relevant anymore. This is getting big. Um, and it's getting big for consumer lending, for SME lending, and for property lending. You know, Funding Circle is a great example of a great yeah. business lender that's just taking out banks. And, and, it, and it, it's so in the sort of zeitgeist of contemporary culture at the moment. Exactly. People, people are like naturally comfortable with this kind of yeah. platform. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's giving, you know, it's giving lenders access to stuff that only institutions had access to before and that's really interesting it's democratizing finance mm. decentralizing finance so that's really hot um and traditional lenders are structurally incapable of responding okay they have a huge cost base so take for example a traditional bank who will have a um you know have a retail branch network have um Big offices, big staff base, legacy IT systems that were built to do banking 20 years ago, um, regulatory cost of capital now. Okay, and, and McKinsey did a did a study a few years ago in the U.S. market around peer-to-peer -peer lending more broadly, not just in property. Mm. And they concluded that if a bank was giving an SME, a, a small a small and medium-sized business, a loan for an extra manufacturing line in its widget factory because the widget market was looking good then say they're charging 10% to that borrower they wouldn't be making any money unless they're, unless they're giving their savers less than 3% and they're not charity so they're giving their savers 1% so 9 percentage points, 7 percentage points of fixed cost now that's inefficient, fundamentally inefficient mm. Okay, and the whole alternative finance sector are building more efficient models that's able to give both sides a better deal um, and be structurally set up to solve the pains that that the traditional sources you know aren't solving and are incapable of solving moving forward brilliant and so what's next for you guys um as, uh, yeah good question um so my my team is sort of getting bored of me saying uh using the the, the phrase uh, you, you don't see Tiger Woods playing much tennis. And um, it's very easy uh, when you're in an innovative sector to, to innovate broadly and very widely. But actually what we want to do is innovate with depth. Yeah. So we want to do, and we are doing what we do brilliantly, but we want to get better and better and better every day, okay, and serve... Uh, uh, property professionals better and serve everyday retail investors better. Um, and, and our program of work is enormous uh, to do that. And our, but, our, but our clarity of vision on, on what we are doing to build, build that better and better model mm. is, is, is down and clear and our team are working damn hard on it. And as I said, team of 30 enables you to build a hell of a lot. So. And how, and how long how long has you guys been going for? Five years, is it? Yeah, we came together five and a half years ago, um, and we've been we've we've grown modestly as we've gone through proof of concept, and, yeah, uh, you know, etc. And now we're getting our our annualized application rate direct into our platform, so people putting projects into onto our website for about one point seven billion pounds per year. Uh, so there's a lot of people out there. We see a lot of the market. And that's taken five years of building a brand, building a trusted brand, mm. and building distribution to lenders and to borrowers. And yeah, I was, I was going to ask, because you were saying that the first project that you went live with took 10 weeks to fund, and yeah. now you're doing it within 30 minutes. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And then it's just, it's phenomenal. Yeah. And what would you say has been the sort of the secret to being able to like innovate like that and deliver that kind of process? It's, fo it's absolute focus. You know, it, it, I, I'm a strong believer in, in any business having spent years advising businesses on strategic growth. Yeah. The power of focus. Okay. And building something that you are advantaged at doing, you have you have insight, you have expertise, okay? And then 
and then making that insight and expertise even better, even clearer, uh, even more powerful and just better than everyone else. And that's what we focus on. And that basically builds a long-term sustainable business. Mm. And, and you know, that is the right way to approach business in my mind. It's nowhere near a tra- transactional level. It's fundamental competitive advantage, being the best at what you're doing, and then have a vision that looks at 10, 20, 30 years of growing your business. So, and that's what we do. Amazing. Excellent. Thank you so much for for your time today. I really enjoyed this conversation. Cool. Pleasure. Likewise. Thank you. And that's a wrap. Thank you very much for listening. And of course, don't forget to book your one-to-one breakthrough session with the Architects Marketing Institute. This could be one of the most important conversations that you have around your business this year. So follow the link in the information and grab that opportunity. And I look forward to hearing all about it. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.